and all for you. Amen. Hallelujah. I have been teaching on the series Spiritual Warfare and um, I would like to bring a close to it today and uh, trust that uh, we can have another opportunity that then we'll be able to maybe delve into different aspects of warfare but I want to put an end to that series today and I will read the scriptures that um, I have been reading before um, I want to welcome everybody joining us both here and uh, virtually uh, the Lord bless you even as you listening to his word this morning Amen. Ephesians chapter 6 verse uh, let me read verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Some versions say put on the full armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Okay. Um, Stand therefore, having guarded your waist with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Okay? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. The Lord bless his word. Amen. I want to begin this morning uh, by just uh, stating a few things that we have been looking at. I remember we began by saying that things happen in the spirit and they only manifest in the physical. So by the time you see it in the physical, you know that it already was sealed in the spirit. And that is why we have continually emphasized that it is important for you to walk in the spirit. We have continually emphasized it is important for you to be close to the spirit of God, to have a close walk with God. Because when you do that, it means then you are walking in tandem with God. Amen. Amen. When you are close to the spirit of God, I am yet to see somebody who is genuinely walking with God, closely with God, that then became destroyed. Anyone that becomes destroyed after walking with God means they got to a point where they stopped following the promptings of God. They stopped following the ways of God. And the Bible gives us those examples. King Solomon is one of them who began in the Lord. He began with the Lord because he saw God with his father. All right. But because he got lost because of the love of the world and the women and, and they led him to their gods. Okay. As many theologists say, he ended up losing that fear of God at some point in his life. But we still see that despite the fact that he went astray, he never forgot God. Amen. Amen. And that is why the scriptures tell us that we should raise our children in the ways of God. So that when they grow up, they will not depart from them. 
It doesn't matter how wicked somebody is. If they were brought up in the ways of the Lord, something happens on the inside of them. Their conscience is never completely dead. They will always remember humanity. They will always remember God. They will always remember the love of God. Amen. Amen. And that is why as a nation we ought to pray that God will give us leaders that fear him. Amen. Leaders that know God. Amen. Leaders that are following hard after God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So I want to say this this morning. That spiritual warfare is a reality that every believer must be conscious of. You must be conscious that at every given time in your life, you are in a war zone, okay? You may be at a time of peace, but it does not negate the fact that, that there is war going on around you. It is no wonder that the scripture often, or not often, but a couple of times refers to us as soldiers. It says, you cannot look back. You cannot be concerned about civilian matters anymore when you are recruited into the army of the Lord. What does that tell us? It tells us that we must always remember that there is war going on and therefore when we are talking about putting on the full armor of God, we are not saying that we put it on for a season. We don't put it on for a season. We put it on for life. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus said from the time of John the Baptist, until now, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Hallelujah. That means that there is a certain character that a believer needs to develop for them to be able to prevail. Hallelujah. And that character is not one of woye, I'm sorry. It is not that character. It is one of a valiant soldier. It is Amen. that one that says, I am going to fight. Amen. It is Amen. that kind of character that says that I am not resting until it is established. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. No wonder the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, it says, give the Lord no rest until it is established. What is that that we are not giving Lord the Lord rest about? It is the things that God has declared upon us. Amen. And it is because Isaiah knew that there are forces that will try to stop what God wants to do. And he says, give God no rest until it is established. Hallelujah. Praise Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we are not of those that are going to rest. Amen. We are of those that are going to arise. Amen. We are of those that are going to persist. Amen. That is why I see even Apostle Paul is saying, he said, pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. He said, be watchful to this end with all perseverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we are teaching you about warfare, I'm not saying we are in a season of warfare. Maybe you are in a season of peace right now, but understand that we are in war perpetually. And therefore, when we are of the kingdom of God, we must know at all times that we must always go for that which God has promised us. Blessed be the name Hallelujah. of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. Praise God. So, number two, spiritual warfare is mostly a clash of kingdoms. It is a clash of kingdoms. We experience warfare because there is warfare at the kingdom level. So there is the kingdom of darkness and there is the kingdom of light. And these two kingdoms are always clashing. Because there is what the kingdom of light wants to establish and there is what the kingdom of darkness wants to establish. So the minute you take a stand in any of those kingdoms, you become either a target of, of, of the other kingdom, all right? And blessed are you if you are on God's side. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. The Lord. Praise the Lord. So understand this, that when we get saved, the minute we give our lives to Jesus, there is, if actually, let me, let me, let me um, correct that. From the time we are born, all right? It is clear that we are all born with a purpose. And that purpose is not just known to you or to God. There are certain signs that follow people, that the enemy knows that this child is a child of promise. Mm -hmm. There is a way the enemy knows that this is not an ordinary child. This is a child that is going to bring deliverance. 
This is a child that is going to be great. And so the enemy begins to plan way before, way before there's even manifestation of anything physical like greatness in your life, okay? So anytime we, we talk of warfare, please don't just think it is warfare because you are born again. No, it is warfare because when you are dispatched on earth, there's already a purpose that is assigned to you and the enemy will always try to fight that purpose. Yes. And that is why we say parents need to raise their children in the ways of God. And in instances where people are not raised in the ways of God, God always connects them in their lifetime with people that will help them to find their purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So understand that for as long as you have a purpose to accomplish on the face of the earth, the enemy will always come. All right? However, as I said, we are victorious in Christ and we will talk about the uh, weapons that God has given us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So when we are in the kingdom of light, the kingdom of darkness will fight us. And the kingdom will fight us because it does not want light to spread. So sometimes it's not even about you. There's a time it's about you, but there are times when it's not really you, the person. It is what you stand for. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. So understand this. That we must therefore then be properly rooted in the kingdom we have chosen. Be properly rooted in that kingdom. Properly. I am, I am emphasizing properly. So that you are not on the fence. Jesus says, you are neither hot nor cold, therefore I will spew you out of my mouth. You must be hot for God. When you choose to follow God, follow hard after him. Amen. When you choose to follow the things of God, follow hard after the things Praise of God. Hallelujah. Because that way, you position yourself strongly to be able to be victorious. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm reminded in the scripture when Joshua, they were going to go to war and an angel appeared to him. And many people say this was no ordinary angel, but it was Jesus before he, he was uh, manifested in the flesh uh, uh, on earth. And so he asked, who are you? Are you for us or against us? He said, I'm neither for you nor against you, but I am the captain of the army of the Lord host. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Which means, and there's a way Papa explains that scripture. He says, it's not about you, uh, it's not God coming on your side. No. The captain of the army of the Lord's host is saying, I have come with victory. I have come to fight on God's behalf. But your victory is dependent on whether you align with me or not. So God is neither for you nor against you. God is for himself and his purposes. Hallelujah. And his purposes include your life. Amen. His purposes include the promises that he has made. But when you align with God, scripture says, but in union with him, would those promises be accomplished? In union with him, would his purposes be accomplished? Blessed be the name of the Lord. So this morning, my charge to you is to say, be properly aligned. Take a stand and live by that stand. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Number three, we have been given spiritual weapons to deal with the enemy. Hallelujah. Praise the and Lord. I want to read this scripture in the book of Luke chapter 4. The Bible says, verse 18, Jesus uh, quoting Isaiah, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Mm. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind. <coughs> Sorry if I could get some water. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. Thank you. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Then Jesus closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. 
In other words, Jesus was declaring the prophecy in Isaiah had been fulfilled. Amen. Amen. And it had been fulfilled right before their eyes. I've said this before. I've said, if Adam brought the fall of man and Jesus came to bring back life, then we must see what Jesus carried. We must study the anointing that was upon Jesus for us to understand how we are supposed to overcome. Blessed be the name of Hallelujah. the Lord. I said we must understand the anointing that Jesus had for us to understand how we can overcome. Because he came so that he can reverse what Adam did. Hallelujah. So when he comes and he says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me, it behooves us as believers to ensure that the spirit of the Lord God is upon us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is not enough to confess Jesus in your life. It is not enough for you to just say, I'm born again. And therefore the Holy Spirit comes on the inside of you. I think you have learned in our discipleship classes that when you are born again, the Holy Spirit comes on the inside of you. He comes and becomes the seal, the evidence that you belong to God. Amen. Amen. But there is another step from there that we must be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus was baptized in the water. We have to be baptized in the water as well as a physical symbol. All right. But you must be baptized in the Holy Spirit. We cannot fight this battle without the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Praise I tell you, I have been involved in spiritual warfare for many, many years. Uh, okay, if I say many, many, uh, many like <laughs> decades. Eh? But I've been involved in spiritual warfare, and I can tell you, without walking with the Spirit of God, you cannot properly do warfare. You can't. Okay. He says, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. What has he done? He has anointed me. What is an anointing? Anointing is... is the enabling power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. It is a power. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That sits on an individual. Amen. Amen. So you must be a believer that prays to be anointed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the things I remember I used to pray and I used to cry to God. And I would say, Father, anoint me. Anoint me. I used to do deliverance. I would spend hours praying for people so that they can be delivered. One day I said, no, God, I can't be spending four hours praying for somebody to be delivered. I should be preaching to the lost. I say, Father, anoint me. Father, let your power rest upon me. And if you look at the life of Jesus, when Jesus met the madman, the demons, the legion, they say legion, they could easily identify who Jesus was. And they knew that their time was not yet. So they negotiated with Jesus. All right. But they knew that there was something different about this person. Because the power of God was upon Jesus. Amen. 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 The power of God was upon Jesus. And therefore, everywhere he went, Anything that was contrary to the word of God, anything that was contrary to the work of God, of necessity had to react to the presence and the anointing that was upon Christ. How I pray that in this day and age, God is going to raise men and women that are going to walk into a place and diseases disappear. Amen. It has happened. It has happened, my friends. My desire is that among us, God will raise men. I remember testimonies of, I think it's a woman of God, that she went to a hotel, she had to be passed through the kitchen because she couldn't go through the front door. And even then, there was, people were falling, people were falling under the power of the Holy Spirit because of what she carried. 
There's a man of God who just used to pray. He would wake up in the morning and pray in the wee hours of the morning. And what he didn't know is that people were passing and when they were passing, they were hit by the power of the Holy Spirit outside of his house. And people packed their cars and they started worshiping God. It has happened, my friends. Why can't it happen in our generation? Amen. That we'll be so full of the power of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is possible, but do you desire it? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is, um, I believe it is the Kenneth Hagen, who one time was in his house, and he had some commotion downstairs, and he walked down to see who was causing the commotion in his house, and he saw Satan seated in his house. I say, oh, it's you. And he left. <laughs> My friend, we need to get to levels like those. Amen. Where we are not moved by what is happening around us. Amen. But it takes a character, a violence in the spirit. Amen. A violence in the spirit Amen. that says, I am going to pursue hard after God. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I will tell you one time I was praying and I was telling the Lord. I was just praying. I, I was worshipping actually. I wasn't praying. I was just worshipping. And as I was worshipping, I remember I was having a conversation with the Lord. And I said to him, I said, Lord, I don't want many things. I don't even want to be anointed. No, I just want you. I just want a relationship with you. And the Lord said, that is not proper. The relationship with me, you will have it. But you are on earth to do something. And that something requires the anointing. And therefore, you need to seek for that anointing. Wow. Hallelujah. 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 So we must have our relationship with God secure. And after you have that secure, now we go after the purposes of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We go after the kingdom. Yes. Amen. Yes. Blessed be the name Hallelujah. of the Lord. Amen. Amen. If nothing else, this morning, I pray that I stir you up to arise in the spirit. Amen. Seek to grow. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, the spirit has anointed me to do what? He said, to preach the gospel to the poor. What is this gospel? It is good news. What is this gospel? The word of God. And it is the same thing you see in Ephesians that Apostle Paul says. That in, a, in, the, in among the, 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 the armor that we have been given is the sword of the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the, the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Preach the gospel to the poor. I've said this before. The poor do not need money. They need the gospel. They need information. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise because it is that information that transforms. That is why it is possible to have believers, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, tongue talking, demon chasing, and yet if you look at their pockets, they are as dry as can be. Why? It is because we are not getting information. Jesus was very clear. And if he came for the poor, it means he came so that people should not continue to be poor. So you should not have a problem with a believer who has money. Hallelujah. Woo! You should not have a problem with money. Can I say that again? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise, Hallelujah. The, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, a spiritual father sometimes says something. Um, people who like to fold their offering, you know, like the right hand should not know what the left hand has. He says, when you go to the supermarket, even if you're buying chewing gum and it is fiber, you don't take your money, you fold it, and you give it to the cashier and buy a chewing gum. We don't do that. You take your fiber proudly, take it, put it there, orbit, give me. He punches and he gives, he even gives you a receipt, which may cost more than the chewing gum you bought. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Why? Because there is no shame in what you are given. There is no shame because you know what you are after. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And we borrow a principle there that if you are looking for the anointing, you must be willing to pay the price. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you 
look for chewing gum, you should have at least 10 bob in your pocket. Hallelujah. Amen. But if you're buying a Rolls Royce, hallelujah. hallelujah. Your bank account should also correspond. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. hallelujah. So what anointing are you looking for? Are you looking for chewing gum anointing? <laughs> that's that's the Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So for, for you to be anointed, by the time Jesus gets to this point, he has been fasting 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you, you cannot even fast unless you are told to fast by the church. <coughs> uh-huh. You're quiet. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Prayer time is something we have to pray for you. For you to pray. <laughs> you become a prayer point. For you to pray. Okay. By the time Jesus gets to this point, he has spent 30 years in obedience to God. The Bible doesn't give us much about his story, but you can see that at age 12, he was in the temple. He remained because he was discussing the word with the Pharisees in the temple. And he was asked, you know, didn't you think we'd be looking for you? And he said, didn't you know I would be in my father's house? Which means, even from a young age, he dedicated himself to the purpose for which he came. You want to start committing today, and you want God to anoint you today. From where? <laughs> from where? It has to be a life of consistency. Amen. A life of obedience to the purposes of God. A life of obedience to the will of God. And I guarantee you, from scripture and from practice and from examples of men and women of God that have gone ahead of us, you will be so anointed. You will be looking for where to manifest. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know. You know, when I was a little younger in the in the well, in age and in faith, I was so zealous, my friend, for lost souls. We used to gather some friends of mine, we would go to Uhuru Park and start preaching to people. The church didn't send us, nobody sent us. We just decided that we want to go out there and preach the gospel. And that came after I read a book by T.L. Osborne on soul winning. And I said, I'm not a pastor. I have no title to my name. That time I couldn't even sing a complete song on the same key. Amen. Amen. But I had this desire to serve God. So what happened? We went, I gathered some friends of mine and would go to Uhuru Park on Saturday. We start preaching. We find you having fun. We hammer the gospel to you by fire, by force. Some people actually got saved and came to church. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm saying this, I had no title whatsoever. I was just a nice young girl on fire for God. Can we find those kinds of people today? Young people today are busy running after social media. Likes and I don't know whatever, I don't know what they are called anymore. I keep finding there are more terms coming up. How many likes do you have? How many likes do you have? You post things for likes. Those days anyway, it wasn't there. Those days there was no media where you could go and preach. So we went and preached. Hallelujah. 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 I remember one time we had gone for a mission to Rongai. The Rongai, those days, it was a bush. Okay? In the, that was 90, what? Maybe around 2000, the year 2000. Where were some of you? <laughs> we were preaching the gospel then. I was in campus then. And I remember the university had organized a mission and I went to Rongai. And when we were there, we had turns. So we'd go, every day there was somebody who stayed behind to pray. Okay. So um, we were there for five days. So one of the days I remember, I was there praying and uh, others had gone out. So I remained in that church to pray. So I was praying, and as I was praying, something very interesting happened. 
I got to a point in the spirit that I felt I could not pray anymore. All right? And it's like something came and choked me and I couldn't pray anymore. I didn't have a flu. I was very okay. And I just started to plead the blood of Jesus. I tried to mention the name of Jesus. Nothing was coming out. My voice was completely gone. But I said, I said, if this is what warfare is, we are fighting until the end. I am not letting go. And I tell you, I prayed and prayed until I saw an image come before me. I couldn't tell who it was, but it was a figure, a human figure, like a shadow. And I prayed and prayed until that figure disappeared. And I just felt a lifting in the area. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise and my voice came back because that time I was praying. My voice wasn't coming back, but I wasn't giving up because I was saying this thing. Uh, we are going after it until we get a breakthrough. Amen. At that time, I was not a pastor. I was nothing in the church. I think I was acting. I used to act. Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm saying this to try and stir you up that don't wait for a title. Don't wait for a title for you to serve God. Don't even wait to be given a platform. You can create a platform that you can achieve the purposes of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And when I left that place, I remember I was with my two friends. My, my, one of them always reminds me. We were coming back. And you know that time, it was around, um, yeah, it was the year 2000 because... I remember there was a lot of anxiety then about crossing the millennium. There are challenges you guys have no idea. <laughs> yeah. So there was a lot of anxiety. I don't know a computer is going to crash because now they're used to, I think the 1999s, what not, what not. So now we are crossing and you know, there was all that hula baloo. And <laughs> I remember when we were coming in that matatu, I said, praise the Lord, in the matatu. Everybody looked around. <laughs> My friend looked at me, she smiled. I said, praise the Lord again. A few people responded. I said, I want to preach to you. And I said, and my friend is going to read the word of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have to learn to, to get encouragement for yourself. Amen. 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 So I knew that this was going to be hard if I'm going to preach alone. So I recruited my friend by force. And I told her to open the Bible and the scripture. And she read the scripture. And I hammered the gospel for just three minutes. And I left it there. What happened to that seed? Wow. Hallelujah. Praise Let it be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I remember another time I was in Mombasa in Amatatu. Hey, I was on fire for God. I had just come from a lunch hour service. We have worshipped. The presence of God is just sitting heavily on me. I sit in a matatu playing very funny music. I told the tout, I told him, please reduce the volume. He refused. I said, please re re reduce the volume. He said, if you don't want a matatu with music, go to another matatu. I said, okay. We continued. The system, something happened to it. It just went dead and they couldn't revive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I don't know what happened to it because anyway, when I got to my destination, I got out and I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 With my small faith, as a young, I was even still a teenager then, by the way. Yeah, because I went to campus quite early. Yeah. So, you, how old are you? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah. So what am I saying? I'm saying that we must seek to be anointed by God. God is looking for people who are going to serve him. God is looking for people who are going to affect generations. God is looking for people who are going to be strategically positioned so that the purposes of the kingdom of God can be effected. Will you be among those? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So preach the gospel to the poor. It says, I have given you the sword of the spirit. What does that mean? It means that you can position yourself in such a way that when you speak the word of God, it is not just words that people are hearing. Yeah. They are swords that are being released from your mouth. Yeah. 
the Lord. Amen. That's why if you if you have time, look at the book of Revelation. You will see amazing things. In fact, John Fast says, he says, I had a voice behind me, so I turned to look. You discover that you can hear a word, but that word needs to get to a point where you can see it. Oh. Hallelujah. You can hear a word, like now I'm preaching to you, but you can be in such a posture that as I am preaching, while your ears are hearing, your eyes are beginning to see in the spirit where you are going. Amen. That as I speak, you can begin to see that gates are shattering, that doors are opening, that interacting with. Amen. I pray one day we'll have an opportunity to actually just do a teaching on the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. In the book of Genesis, the Bible says, it says, and the voice of God was walking in the garden. The voice of God was walking in the garden. Jesus is the word. It says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. So when we talk about the word, we are talking about Jesus. You want more of Jesus, get more of the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise and let me Lord. tell you, there is no powerful tool of deliverance like the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I can pray demons Amen. out of somebody, but if they don't have the word of God, that deliverance is only temporary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know whether I've said this Praise here before. There's somebody I was praying with. And my goodness, she had. She was under demonic oppression, properly, properly. And I got to a point, I told her, the only way I can help you is if you can come and sit under my teachings. She didn't come, so I let her be. I have learned uh, with deliverance, if somebody is not willing to be taught the word of God, you better let them be. You know why? Because that deliverance will not be permanent the demons will go when they leave your presence the demons will be waiting for them outside and the scripture says they come back stronger because they go and gather neighbors and come back so that now they are not removed yes so your surest deliverance yes. for anyone that is bound that is dealing with demonic oppression yeah. is for you to hear the word of Hallelujah. god it's for you to get the word of god because Blessed be the name of the Lord. Look at Moses. He is sent to go and deliver the children of Israel. While we know the, um, the plagues that hit Egypt, Moses had one simple message. Let my people go. That's all he went to tell Pharaoh. He may have used many words. Those are footnotes. But his message was, let my people go. And Jesus says to proclaim liberty to the captives. So those that are captives, what is required? They need to hear the word, a proclamation of the word of God. Yes. <coughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. That is why if you find yourself in a church that doesn't teach the word of God, my friend, you are sitting on shaky ground. Mm. I believe in miracles. I love miracles. But listen to me, if you're in a place that only showcases miracles, but does not teach you the word of God, you are sitting on very shaky ground. You become like the children of Israel. Because they knew the acts of God. Yes. They never knew God. In your day of trouble, when you will not be able to find your, the man or woman you call your man of God, my friend, you will sink. You will sink faster than you will know it. The word is the only anchor we have been given for our faith. In fact, it is so fundamental that if you find anything that is contrary to the word of God, you are permitted to abandon it immediately. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Praise that God himself is bound by his word. Yes. My God. I hope that 
is enough to stir somebody to know the word of God. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I had a very bad flu. It was splitting headache on uh, Thursday. Was it Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. I'd been in bed most of the day. And I remember I said, I cannot miss prayer for anything. And so in the evening during the prayer, I joined the prayer from my bed. Amen. And I prayed. Oh, I prayed. Amen. You know, there are prayers you pray when you are okay. Yes. But there are prayers you pray when you know that this prayer is yes. my solution. Yes. This prayer is my door to getting well. Yes. And I prayed. I participated. I think I even shared a brief word. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I needed to tell the devil, yeah. you may be trying something, but I'm not bored. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm not bored. I am well in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. The Lord. That is where you remember that scripture says, by the stripes of Jesus, yeah. I was healed. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He sent his word and he healed all. All their diseases. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And on Friday I was up and about and I went to work. I even had a breakfast meeting. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. So we fight with the word of God. We proclaim. We declare it over everything that goes around us. Amen. 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 And that's where that scripture applies where we say we give God no rest until it is established. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then Jesus says to set at liberty those who are oppressed. To set at liberty, which means there's an anointing that sets free. Amen. Amen. There's an anointing that sets free. Mm -hmm. So there is the word of God, yes, and then there's also the anointing. Hallelujah. Praise Blessed Lord. be the name of the Lord. Praise Blessed Lord. be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So you need both. You need the word, which is the foundation. You also need the anointing. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. The kind of anointing that when it sits upon you, yes. you are able to lay hands on the sick and they recover. It's the kind of anointing that rests upon you, and when you speak to demons, they vanish. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. It is the kind of anointing that teaches you to do things. I don't know, there's a day, and I think Papa has mentioned something like this, but there's a day we were, I was praying in our house, and uh, that time we were meeting, Papa had traveled, he wasn't there, and uh, we were meeting many years ago for choir practice. So that day people didn't show up. We used to meet in our house, okay? So we'd meet on Fridays, and uh, Friday evening, so because people were working, people were busy, so we'd meet in the evenings uh, and would practice from 6 to, 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 to 10, to 10 p.m. And then people would go home. So we had this lady, uh, she passed on, unfortunately, but because she had a small baby, she used to come. I'm telling you, people sacrifice to serve God. Amen. She had a small baby, so she used to come with the baby home. So she would would practice and then she would sleep in our house and then she would go in the morning okay so this day we were praying uh, so the people didn't show up so it was just the two of us so we said since we are only two let's just pray so we began to pray <laughs> we prayed i think we had prayed about an hour or so i had sophia's falling in my kitchen i said hey okay ah so i went to check and when I got there, I found one of the nannies that we had at that time was on the floor. And she was crawling. I mean, there were some very strange sounds coming from her. And you know, Papa had asked me a few weeks, because she had just been with us for maybe a month or two. So just after she came, Papa asked me, is this lady okay? I said, yeah, she's okay. I said, are you sure? I said, yeah. I said, okay, you just monitor, but I don't have a very good feeling. So we said, okay. So as 
God would have it. <laughs> the investigation came through prayer. Amen. 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 <laughs> so when we prayed, that's when we now discovered she was actually demon possessed. So my friend, we prayed. We changed gears and we started praying. We prayed. I think we finished praying at around 1 a.m. That's when she was fully delivered. Fully delivered. And we stayed with her. Even Papa would say, we could not understand why we kept her in our house. We couldn't. But I think when God has a plan for your life, he will cause people to love you even when you have issues. Because we stayed with her. Even after that, she came, she became a member of the church, she would sing in the choir, you know, and, and on and on and on. Occasionally she would have all those episodes. But I remember one time I came home, she was sick, she was in bed. I prayed for her, I told her, don't get up. I prayed for her. She got up, she went and hoped. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm telling you these stories for you to understand. There's an anointing that can sit on you. That anointing can cause you to set captives free. Amen. And I tell you, by the time she left our house, she was a fully trained uh, teacher, ECD teacher. She had done her certificate course with us when we were staying with her. We educated her. She did her diploma. Now she's a teacher. She's teaching. Amen. She has her own, a full-time job, employed in a very good place. One of the top schools, actually, not just a good, one of the top schools we have in the city. There's an anointing that can come and sit on you. That's the point I'm making. And that anointing can cause you to change people's destinies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So those are the people that are needed in these last days. So we need people that will go after the anointing. Yes. People that will pay the price for that anointing. And when that anointing rests upon them, yes. they will be manifesting in different places. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And remember, the Bible says, that the fivefold ministers, the apostles, prophets, teachers, what is their role? Is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, which means that it is you to go and do the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. My responsibility is to train you so that you can go and do the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. So when we talk about outreach and evangelism, I am expecting that you'll be on the forefront going out to preach the gospel. That when we talk about going for missions, you'll be on the forefront going for missions. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. When we say we are healing the sick, you'll be stretching your hand fast. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Raising a generation of people that are going hard Hallelujah. Amen. You know, sometimes I daydream. I'm a sanguine. Amen. Amen. And one of the things I was daydreaming about, and I, I'm praying now about it. I, day, I was daydreaming. I said, I need to get to a point where I will be charging a hundred thousand for my cakes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You want to buy, you want me to do your wedding cake? Yes. That's okay. I don't charge anything less than a hundred thousand. Hallelujah. But it is because when I make that cake and oh. people in your wedding eat it, oh. anyone who is diabetic becomes poor. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Blessed be the name Hallelujah. of the Lord. Amen. That if I make for you tea with my hands oh. and you take that tea. Lord. Oh. Amen. I don't know, maybe it's just crazy thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. When I was a young girl, there's a poem we used to recite. And we used to say, call me crazy, but crazy for Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Call me crazy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and we used to, hey. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The challenge is that in our generation, we have become very intellectual, which is a good thing. 
but we have become so intellectual that we have lost the word. One time I was shocked. I listened to Joyce Meyer a lot, the woman of God. I have never, because most of the time you just see her teaching the word. And she teaches it with such simplicity, you know. And I think I was so deceived to think this woman of God, while she has very good uh, command of the word and she can really teach, I think I had boxed her in that realm until one time I had her prophesy. And laying hands on people and saying, oh, okay. So, there is a way you can box people until you fail to benefit from the grace that is actually in their lives. You know, <laughs> people who have seen Papa preaching in Kingdom Church, my friend, you have seen nothing yet. I tell you the truth. Hang around. Just hang around. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just hang around. You will see it. And I'm saying this because we have become intellectual, so we want to pick the word that excites us or that looks very deep. And when somebody comes with something very simple, you begin to think, ah, this one I have heard it before. But you miss the grace and the anointing that is coming with that word. Hallelujah. There's a time I stopped listening to men of God of this generation. <laughs> And I decided I just want to go back. I want to go back and listen to the John G. Lakes. I want to listen to Smith Wigglesworth. I want to listen to uh, even Kenneth Hagin. Okay. I want to just go and listen to, to, to you know, the men and women of God of those days, Catherine Coleman and all. And actually I was shocked that when I listened, we have so much deep revelation now. <laughs> But the demonstration of the power of God is much less. When you look at the olden times, the songs that they used to sing, they used to sing hymns. And the power of God would move. Now we have songs that, you know, are the word, quoted verbatim. But that power is not there. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we go into a battlefield and there is nothing to show for it. We are quashed. You go to a place where you try to preach and I'm telling you this, spiritual warfare is so real. And, and I've been in places where I was completely unable to preach. Completely unable to preach. Until we had to now pray afresh. And break whatever it is whatever opposition is there so that now I was able to preach so it's not a joke hallelujah praise the Lord hallelujah praise the Lord so I'm saying let us prioritize the word of God let us seek the anointing of God amen, amen. hallelujah amen. we've talked about the sword of the spirit amen, amen. we have talked about the word it says Stand therefore having guarded your waist with truth. Very interesting. What is truth? Truth is not fact. Okay? I'm starting to talk like a lawyer. Truth is not fact. <laughs> we are defining by elimination. Truth is the essence of what something is. Okay? Amen. The purity of something. Wow. I'm trying to find a word that would define it properly. Mm -hmm. It is the bare foundation. Like be beyond it, there is nothing else. Okay, Beyond it, there is nothing else you can uncover. The purest form of something. Amen. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> so the Bible says, guard your ways with truth. Do you know the truth? What is the truth? The truth, we actually find it in the word of God. Amen. Then also, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So what is the Bible saying? He says, find Jesus. Amen. You will win your battles. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Find Jesus. You will win your battles. Amen. Amen. So, what is the truth? 
by the stripes of Jesus we were healed. healed. And therefore, I am not the sick looking for healing, okay? Yeah. I am the healed contending for my position. Yeah. Blessed be the name of God. Yeah. And when you begin to understand that, my friend, your faith will be stirred up. That is where you get to a point where you see that the landlord is locking your door. Mm. But you know that all silver and gold belong to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A couple on a thousand hills belong to him. And therefore you can begin to believe that God is able to turn that situation around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise because Praise you know the truth. Yes. So when you know the truth, even when the enemy comes in, yes. you know the Bible says when he comes in like a flood. of righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness, some people say it is right standing with God. But remember, the Bible says that our righteousness is like filthy rags before the Lord. So where do we get this righteousness? It is imputed to us by virtue of the death of Christ. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, for our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of oh. God. So anytime the enemy comes Hallelujah. against you and he tries to tell you about your past, you tell him there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Breastplate of righteousness. Hallelujah. It is in that that the enemy comes and the Bible says that he could find nothing in Jesus. Amen. Amen. He could find no sin in him. So there was no anchor for the devil to enter. Remember when we were talking about gates. Yeah. When we allow sin to come into our lives and therefore the enemy hangs on to that and begins to attack our lives. But when we put on the bracelet of righteousness, it means when the enemy comes, he sees Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He sees Amen. the righteousness of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a song we used to sing. It used to say, it's the blood, it's the blood, it's the blood that he sees when he looks at me. It's the blood, it's the blood, it's the blood. So when the enemy wants to attack you, he comes, but he sees the blood. He tries, he sees the blood. Yes. He knows this one cannot be touched because this one has been covered by the blood yes. of the Lamb. Remember in Egypt, when the angel of death came and he saw the blood and he bypassed every door, both that had blood on it. That is what happens when we put on the breastplate of righteousness because we are putting on Christ. So the enemy comes and he knows this one I cannot touch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Lord. I want to finish. I want to finish. It's about time. Amen. Amen. It says, and having showed your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So, what protects you? What protects your feet? The gospel. How does that even happen? Remember where the Bible says, that you shall trample on snakes and scorpions. Yes. Alright? Yes. It, it means that there are things that are walking on the face of the earth. Alright? There are things that are working against us from the face of the earth. So anytime that we come with a gospel of peace, you are walking into a place with peace. I don't know why Jesus used this same uh, 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 example when he said to the disciples, go to a place and don't carry anything. And if they receive you, you go and dine with them, preach and dine with them. But if they don't, what do you do? You do what? You dust. You stamp your feet and you go. What does that mean? It means that when you go to a place, 
and when you go to a place and they receive you, by virtue of you going to step into that place, you are going with a blessing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And that blessing doesn't just come. That blessing comes because of the gospel that you carry. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because they are not receiving you because of you. If you went on your own, they may not have received you. But when you go because you are carrying the gospel, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It means that as you walk and as you enter into a place because of what you carry, then when you step into that place, you are blessing that place. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, glory. Gospel of peace. The shield of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, we were taught about faith. I think it was this. So Tuesday, yeah. What is faith? Faith is a substance of things not seen. Is it? Amen. 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 The Lord. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. What is faith? Faith, we were told, is more than just hope. Faith is more than believing God. Faith is more than just knowing. Faith is actually accepting, okay, first, faith is hope, believing, and then after believing, it is translating that belief into tangible action. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name Praise of the Lord. Lord. Let me try to put it simply. Faith is higher ground assembly Nairobi West. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Starting services. Amen. 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 Glory be to Jesus. Amen. And knowing that we have been assigned here and we have multitudes already coming. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name Amen. of the Lord. Amen. And us behaving like they are already coming. Yes. By getting a tent. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. By us going through discipleship classes. Amen. So that we are prepared for the harvest that is coming. Amen. That is faith. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Faith is knowing that when you stand up and I say sit, you'll find the chair where you left it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you, if I say stand, if I say sit, you'll start first seeing whether the seat is there before you sit. Amen. Amen. Yeah? That's just on a light alone. But faith is believing the word of God. And acting upon it, declaring it, speaking it until you see it manifest. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So a shield, faith. So faith, what does it do? It becomes a shield. So when the enemy is trying to throw arrows at you, he's trying to tell you you will not make it. You say, no, I know that God has good plans for me. Plans for good and not evil. I believe it. I may not see it, but I believe it. Hallelujah. 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 And that is why, one of the reasons why the word of God is written. It is written for us, not for God. God does not need the word. God knows the word. He is the word. But the word is written for us. So that when you read that Abraham was able to get a child at an advanced age, you are able to believe for your own. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That when you see how David sinned against God, but he went back and God took him back and God called him a man after my own heart. You have hope for yourself that even when you backslide, you can go back to God and he will accept you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because that builds faith in us. When you see the journey of the children of Israel, you are able to learn the mistakes they made and the victories they had. And you are able to believe God for your own. That is why we testify. We testify so that somebody who is discouraged can receive hope and know that if God did it for you, he can do it for me. That if it is your turn, my turn is almost coming. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That if God could anoint you like this, he can also anoint me. That if God could lead you this way, he can also lead me. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so when we live our lives like that, the enemy will try to come, but he will not. 
not be able to penetrate because faith becomes a shield. Amen. Oh, glory. And then it says the helmet of salvation. Helmet of salvation. Salvation. That when you are born again, you know your head is covered. Amen. Amen. Somebody tried to explain that in detail. That when, when, when we talk about the helmet of salvation, it means helmet, that, that, that salvation is covering your head means that you have submitted to the headship of Christ. Amen. Amen. So you are no longer leading yourself where you are limited. You are no longer leading yourself with the limited insight you have as a human being. You are no longer leading yourself with the limitations of men, but rather you are surrendering yourself to the wider plan of God. You are surrendering yourself to the eternal purposes of God, and therefore your destiny is protected. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These are the weapons that we have been given. These are the weapons that God has given us to be able to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Amen. And then he says, lastly, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. With all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So with all these things, we now go to prayer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So some of you have been going to the place of prayer naked. <laughs> oh my goodness. So you come from there, you think you are going to fight a battle, they multiply. You went to battle naked. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. In the spirit. It is good to pray in understanding. It is. In fact, I remember somebody one day challenged uh, challenged us. We were in a worship team training session. They challenged us. See, we are going to a time of prayer, and we want you to pray in understanding. After ten minutes, people had nothing new to say. Okay. Because it's worship. It's not prayer. Prayer, you know, you can start praying for your right leg. You start with the big toe. <laughs> To try and get to 10 hours but it is worship and we say don't speak in tongues just uh, after 10 minutes <laughs> oh we have used all the vocabulary we know that we worship god you know yeah but it's saying pray in the spirit in the spirit so and i want to say this when you pray in the spirit and truly your heart is in tune with the heart of and the spirit of god what will happen to you is that when you pray you will actually sense what it is you're praying about so you'll not just be uttering words that you are throwing into the air but because of your relationship with god you begin to even engage different gears but as you do that you will begin to sense and know what you are actually doing in the spirit. So I want to encourage you to begin or, or, or make it a practice to just speak in tongues. Make it a practice. And when you do that, always invite the leading of the spirit of God. You know, when people, when you've been speaking in tongues for long, now if you tell me to start speaking in tongues, I don't even need to sweat it. I even know how my tongues sound. So I know when something is different, I know, okay, the spirit is doing something different. I'm interceding for something. Because I hear myself, amen. Yeah. So if you start telling me now to start speaking tongue, I can speak. I, I mean, you know. But is that it? No. It is that when you begin to speak in tongues, your spirit actually connects with the spirit of God. So that those tongues are not just vain repetitions, but they become powered by God. They become infused by the spirit of God. So you begin to declare mysteries in the heavens. You begin to declare mysteries in the earth. And as your word and your prayer goes out, they become missiles in the kingdom of God. To begin to change atmosphere. To begin to change environment. To begin to bring down strongholds. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And say, being watchful to this end. Being watchful to this end. That means paying attention. Paying attention. Don't just pray and you're not paying attention. Don't just come to church and you're not paying attention. Don't just sit in an environment and you're not paying attention. Because when you are watchful, it means that you are able to see and sense what is happening around you. Amen. Amen. And sometimes that is the thing that can save you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Let me tell you, this is a funny example, but let me share it. Many years ago, my mother... <laughs> Um, I'd gone to a supermarket with somebody and uh, this person had come to visit my mother. Now, this person was known to be an opportunist. Okay. So, um, it was very interesting that, um, so that she had come to visit uh, my mother and um, so she said she wants to go to the supermarket. So my mother took her to the supermarket. She shopped and shopped and shopped and shopped. When she got to the till, my mother excused herself. When she realized she's finishing, my mother excused herself and went. Um, she actually, what happened? I think she pretended to be on phone or something, then she took off and went to wait outside. So this person, when realized that my mother is not there, reduced the things on the trolley and paid for what she could afford. All right? What am I saying? When you start being watchful, you begin to realize that <laughs> there are certain people who are out to get what you have. Okay? There are certain people who want to draw from you. So when you are watchful, you are able to tell very fast and you are able to adjust. Mm -hmm. So my mother saved her money that day. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 So being watchful, just observing, can save you a lot of trouble. Amen. 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 Be watchful. Understand the seasons. There are seasons like the season we are in as a ministry. There is a season in which we are in even as a nation, you can tell. There is a season you are in as an individual, where you work or where you go to school. There are seasons. And when you are watchful... What that means is then you are able to pray correctly. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you are Lord. able to act accordingly when you are watchful. So also be watchful. And it says to this end with all perseverance. That means that sometimes things don't just happen immediately. Sometimes it takes time. And what does that mean? It means that then you have to remain in faith and persevere as you wait on God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I am yet to hear somebody that God used mightily that doesn't have a story of process. Yeah, you need to revisit Papa's messages on kingdom process. I'm yet to hear somebody that made it, even in the secular world, without process. There's no one. I listen to sometimes he's called Stripe Masiwa. He's a businessman, a kingdom businessman. He's, uh, you know, Econet and the like. And um, when you listen to his stories, he tells you his failures. It never just happened in one day, it was a process. I'm not talking politics, but even when you look at the story of our deputy president, Look at the photos where he came from. You can have your own opinions, but I'm just saying this process. Yeah. He didn't just wake up and become deputy president. That's right. There was a process. Yes. Look at the men and women of God in this nation. There was a process. So you don't just wake up and make it. <clears throat> we are living in a generation now that does not want process. They don't want jobs that will help them get process. People want quick turnaround, miracles. They are there, by the way. The only thing is that you may not get what you bargained for. Yeah. These get-rich-quick schemes. Yesterday, I'm, I'm finishing. 
I was in town. I'd gone downtown to pick a few things. And uh, I'd pa I was passing um, archives, eh? national archives. So I was walking down, I needed to go to Roland Gala Street. And so a fellow came to me with a t-shirt. There were many of them with a van. So he came with me. He came to me, sorry, with a t-shirt. He said, oh, madam, 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 do you have a safari com line? I looked at him. He said, yes. He said, have you used it for more than a year? He said, yes. He said, here, we are giving you a t-shirt for free. I said, oh, thank you. Then I started walking. He said, no, we want to give you more time. I said, oh, okay, thank you. I am waiting. He said, no, come. So a lady came with a phone. Eh? So she said, no, give me your number. I send you airtel. I said, I don't want it. <laughs> because if you're giving me airtel, give me a scratch card. I will go and scratch it. I will put airtime in my phone. Okay. So I said, no, I don't want it. He said, okay, give us back our t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I threw it. The guy got upset. Because I actually, I literally just threw it. Because I saw this is a scheme. There's something they wanted to corner me. And it's the lure of free things. Eh? Where somebody is purporting to give you something free, but it is not free. There's a price you are actually going to pay. Yeah. So, this generation, the present generation, they want to be rich now. They want to be rich quickly. I remember I was trying to discuss business with somebody. And um, I was saying, um, for me, this is how I work. Okay. And he said, um, then you are ethically challenged. I said, okay, I didn't even know there was such a term. So he was saying, if you want business, I can give you business. But from the way you are talking, you are ethically challenged. So, which means that I am too ethical to do business with him. So I said, it is okay. We'll, we'll, we'll take it one day at a time. We'll take it slowly. Yeah, God will help us. Yeah. So the lure of free things and quick things and by the time you get it, it's lost because there's nothing, there's no foundation. There's nothing it can hang on to. Because of that, then you find that we have a generation of people that even we are dealing with depression at levels never seen before. And it's no longer the older people, the young people. Because there's this illusion of grandeur that they are courting, and when they don't get it, they get depressed. My friend, us, when we were growing up, when there was no water in the school, you take your bucket, you go down some maybe a kilometer or so, you are going to fetch water. You fetch water, you come, as you're trying to come out, it, it was a very strange place we used to get water from. It wasn't really a river. It's like it's a river, yes, but somebody has put, I think, either... Um, I think dug a well or something. So there was water 24 7. That water was always flowing. But it was deep. So when you're coming up, you better run and be among the first people to fetch water. Because if you're not, some people would pour water. We used to carry water on our heads. Okay. So somebody would pour water. So the other people who come, the place has become slippery. <laughs> so you must figure out how you will get out of that place. Okay. And we would fetch water and would go. And nobody complaining. No one, we didn't complain. I grew up, um, in, I went to boarding school when I was about 10, nine, nine years old, nine, 10. I ate Gideri every single day of my life, except on Sundays, when we ate ugali and tomato soup. <sighs> Oh yeah, and Saturday, Saturday, we ate beef once a week. I saw meat once a week every time I was in school. I saw bread twice a week. We used to take white porridge. Sometimes it is burnt, but you know, if you don't take it, there's no food for you. So I was brought up in an environment where I understood survival. Okay, I understood 
that you don't just sit and wait for things to happen. Sometimes if you sit and wait for things to happen, my friend, they will not happen. So you must go out there and do what you need to do. Amen. 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 Because we are not allowed to carry fruit from home. So you only have school food. Our lunch was always ugali and skuma every weekday. Every week, ugali and skuma. You're lucky if you're in agriculture and you plant onions. <laughs> then we'll pluck those onions you cut and put in your in your food. Raw onions. Amen. Amen. Then I joined uh, poultry. And the, the person who was in charge left, so she left me in charge. So occasionally I would get eggs and get a friend of mine to go and boil for me and bring. But other than that, our diet was ugali, skuma, porridge in the morning. Um, and then, and, and we would take that porridge at 9.30 in the morning. So you go for morning prep at 5.30. You take your breakfast at 9.30. That was our life. And those are the experiences that molded me. They made it easy for me to say like Paul, that where there is plenty, I am okay. And where there is little, I am also okay. It's not pleasant, but I will not struggle over much. But right now, you pick this current generation, just put them in hardship a little. A little depression. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm saying, let us be patient, persevere. As long as you're on the right track with God, your turn is coming. Amen. I said, as long as you're on the right Amen. track with God, your season is coming. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Hallelujah. The Lord. As you continue in the word of God, it is coming. And I tell you, when you are ready, there will be nothing to stop you. Amen. There will be nothing to stop you. Amen. Stephen, they were doing what were they? They were waiting on tables. But because they were waiting in the presence of God, the anointing was sitting upon them. It got to a point where the sitting on tables would not stop them from going out to do the work of the ministry. Amen. But now, somebody has been called to wait on tables. They don't want, they want to go and preach. Ah. Let us wait on God. Amen. Amen. Let us wait on, oh, on God. Hallelujah. 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 Have you been blessed? Oh, yes. yes. Have you been blessed? Oh, yes. Amen. We have come to the end of our service. Hallelujah. 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 The time is so much spent. I didn't even notice. So we'll end it there. Hallelujah. Let's Praise just stand God. up on our feet and let's pray. Hallelujah, Jesus, we thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus, we thank you. We want to thank those that were joining us online. Uh, may the Lord uh, bless you. I think if you would like to give um, the details uh, on the chat, so you will be able to give. And I know that the Lord will bless you, even as you connect with us and you connect uh, with the word of God. You are more than a conqueror. You are victorious. And I trust that I have charged you enough to rise up and become violent in your faith and in the things of the Spirit. May the Lord bless you. Amen. 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 So those of us that are here, I just want you to lift up your hands. I know you've heard the word of God. So I just want you to begin to pray. Ask the Lord to help you, to stir you up, to fire you up, so that you are able to do his will so that you are able to do his reading so that you can be counted upon among the people that God will use in this time to be able to establish the purposes Manto suka di la anta brada do mante brige di la anta le soto musika la bri la soto kuhele kanta la masika tiri brano skolo kwa e brana skida ni kwa baba 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 seke tiki ba kote kote kwa taka ba le 
Satan's clothes. Anyone? No, is it slash from Satan? No, 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 no. Delivered from the power of darkness by Rebecca Brown. Um, this lady, she was a doctor and uh, very prayerful, very prayerful. And um, what happened is that in the area where she was, there was a girl who is actually the subject of that book she's written. This girl was dedicated to darkness. What happened is, when the mother was pregnant and she was going to give birth, the labor was really prolonged. So the baby wasn't really coming out. I think it was many years ago. Maybe some of the advancements we have now are not there. So there was a nurse in that hospital who then told the mother, either a nurse or somebody who told the mother that um, you know what why don't you give me this child if you give me this child we will help you to deliver you just need to give us I think the child the only God, God something some story like that so the mother because she really wanted to give birth and she was in pain she said no problem so immediately she accepted I think she went into labor she gave birth and yeah, so I think they cut the part of the umbilical cord or something was given to this. This nurse went with it. So many years later, this girl now, when she was older, people would come and fight with her and she would fight them all. Even big boys, she would kick them and you know. 
So she had supernatural strength, but she never understood where it came from. So it happened that at birth, she had been dedicated to some priest or something, and she was supposed to actually become a priest or something, to test those things. I'm, I'm seeing this story to tell you what I want us to pray for. And so, now this girl went so high in the rank in the demonic world to the point where she was the wife of Satan. Okay. Now, very interestingly, uh, we are still online. 